It's the year 2020, and I swear, you can't look over your shoulder without finding an API. Well, you may have wondered, before we had the proliferation of web APIs, what other ways did we obtain data from the internet? Well, there were probably open databases back in maybe early 2000s or before that where you were able to find them from, let's say, a website and then go directly to them. I mean, you probably had file directories and structures, which you still do now, where you can pull down text files and other you know, types of files in there. I mean, there had to be something else, right? Well, you sure guessed that there was. And in this case, that was web scraping. So you may be wondering what exactly web scraping is. Well, it's the same thing like companies such as Yahoo, Bing, or uh, especially notably Google do. And what that is, is they crawl other websites and they pull back their information, what we, they may call metadata, and index them. Well, in our case, what we're doing is we're parsing structured HTML and we're using the HTML tags to find meaningful data in between them. And then in this case, we can do whatever we really want with that data. In many ways, we can create an API. Uh, another use that's common that I found is monitoring. So I had an old coworker who would literally look at one pair of shoes online that he was really interested in and he would scrape to get that price and he would run it daily to see how the price changed. And so that was an early form of, of web scraping that he had done. Additionally, um, you will find this to be very popular in, in data science. So especially with machine learning and uh, AI tools, you'll notice that web scraping is almost a necessity because of how many, many places they need to pull data from. Uh, and in many ways, these websites don't have APIs and so they'll just scrape it. And so in this video, we're gonna get started with using a library such as Cheerio.js to pull back data using CSS selectors. And in our case, we're going to render that data into a custom Postman visualizer template using a Bootstrap CSS. Welcome back to Dev Odyssey, a developer's journey through IT, where I cover tutorials and reviews of IT tools and technologies. I'm your host, Orist, and today we are covering web scraping with Cheerio.js and Postman Visualizer. So as you've already heard all the great benefits of, of web scraping, I do have to get into some uh, nitty gritty around web scraping. Web scraping is still a gray area in terms of where it is legally defined. Uh, for the most part, if you're sc web scraping any public data and using it for non-commercial uses, you're generally okay. However, that goes to say that if you try to use it for commercial uses, you may run into um, legal issues, especially violating terms and conditions. A quick story on that is uh, there was a website that was scraping Craigslist, and after they noticed, they sent a cease and desist to which they denied the cease and desist, and so Craigslist took them to court and won. So while this was uh, a few years back and things you know, are changing, it still goes to show that you want to be very mindful about you doing this. And so um, one sense I'd like to say is in this video, it's very uh, educational. I am not encouraging commercial use of web scraping data. I have no guarantees, and uh, this video of content is as its basis and hold no liabilities. So in order to know uh, the legal legalities around it, we need to look at a file called the robot.txt file. So you'll find that in the under the root directory of a website, and in there, there should be a syntax that tells you if you're allowed to scrape or if you're not allowed to scrape or what subdirectories you are allowed to scrape or what crawlers are allowed to scrape. And so this video is not going to really go into the details of that. However, I will have a link below in the description to get a better understanding of what you're looking for. But for us, we're gonna get started with uh, web scraping remoteok.io. And so granted, as I've mentioned, the first thing we should probably do is check out its robot.txt. And so here we have it. Uh -huh. This is the website remoteok.io. And first we're gonna look at its robots.txt. And you can see there's nothing in here. So what that designates to us is we have free reign to scrape the website as is. And so we're, we should be good on that end. And now in this case, what is it that we're going to do to web scrape in this, day, uh, this website? Well, in particular, there's a treasure trove of remote jobs available on remote OK.io. And so what we can use this for is 
scraping this website to look at certain job postings that may be of interest to us and then filter that down and apply to those jobs that meet our criteria for what we want. And so it has a bunch of information in here, including a company, the title of the job, the location, uh, some tags behind it, an apply button. And then additionally, we actually have a description. And in some of them, I have a salary too. So you may be wondering, what's the easiest way to do this? And so a great way to get started for web scraping here is to check out the source using uh, web web tools or the web developer tools. So in here, I'm going to inspect element. And we'll notice here we get all the you know, HTML behind it. Well, a great way to get started, as I noted with CSS selectors, is to select an element within here. And let's say we're going to collect, select growth hacker conversion specialist. In here, it actually pulls us back to that element in HTML. And if we want, we can go and right click that in the web developer tools, copy the selector path. And then from there, we can use that in our web scraping with Cheerio.js because they consume CSS selectors. So if you see, I pasted it in the search bar here and we get the exact CSS selector that will pull us to that exact element. So that's really useful. Now, in our case, we don't want to just pull down that. We want to pull down everything. So we're going to go to the higher level table in, in this uh, HTML source and then iterate over the cells in that table to pull down this data. But this gives us a great way to figure out how to get that table CSS selector, and then we can iterate from there. So we'll return to Postman and get started. So in here, you'll notice that there's not really much in the Postman, uh, Postman-esque features that we're using other than the test scripts where it's really powerful. So we'll go ahead and here and look at the test script because all we do in here is just define the, the actual URL. And now our code. So the first thing we're going to do is look at the constant dollar sign, which we define with the Cheerio library and we load the HTML response from remoteok.io. Okay and in this case, in order to get it, we just use the dot text method or attribute. Then we define our site name. And here we're using a CSS selector of dot top, which is the dot the top CSS class. And then under there, we're looking for a CSS class of action post job. Whatever element that matches, pull the text out of it, and that becomes our site name. So this is like what you see in a web browser tab uh, in the top left hand corner or above you. That's generally the name of the actual website. Then next from here, we're going, since we want to get all the jobs in there, we're going to store those in an array. In this case, we have to store them in two arrays. And that's because the second array contains the description. And as you notice, when I click the cell in remote OK to IO on the table, it drops down and we see that description. Well, those aren't attached to the actual same tables. However, they do have an ID that's the same between them. And we're going to combine them based on that ID into one array. And so that's why we have my favorite variable names, things one and things two. So again, we go with the CSS selector syntax and we're pulling a, the table tag with the ID of jobs board. And then we're pulling down the cell or cells of tr.job where it matches the job class. And then we get the uh, element in each of those and we start to iterate. So from each cell, we start to push all that data into the array. In this case, we're pulling the, the title of the job. And you can see it's just TD dot company position class, and an uh, item prop in there known as title. Same thing with company. It's the same CSS class. And then in this case, it's item prop name, location, same class, but we're looking for the span tag. The link for applying is the root directory. And then we add the source and the a tag, but then we're looking for the attribute href. So um, that anchor tag and the href is the link to apply. And then that idea, as I was talking about, where we're just looking for the attribute data ID. Same thing we do in 
in the second part, except we're looking under jobs board, we're looking for the tr.expand. So as you notice, when I click it, it expands out. They named that class the dot expand class. And in there, we're only looking for two things, the description, which is under the dot heading class and the dot description class for the div. And then we pull down that text. And the same thing with that ID, we just get data ID attribute under the element. Here's where we do our combination here. So the things one array dot each under them, we are filtering a so within each result in that things one array, we're creating a second result within things two, and we filter on where the IDs match. And so this is important because if there isn't an ID, then we can't match on anything and not all of them have an ID. So we do a check to pull down that ID. And now we have the object in the the things to array with that same ID. So now that we have that we have that description response. And so we first do a check. After we log to console, we do a check to make sure that it's greater than zero so that there is something in that array. And if it is, we take the description, we or we set the description in the first things one array or that object within there. And we set it to the results, the first instance of it because you may have more than one. And then we get that description uh, attribute back. And then we set it to there. And, and that's really it. Now we have a combined things one array with all the information that we want. And so then we get to show this into a bootstrapped HTML page. And here is all the the presentation syntax at the top. But most importantly, we have our handlebars syntax here for each response that we send to the template we will look at its job title, the company as well above that, the location, the link, and then the description as well in a, in a paragraph tag. And then we close out our dot each and that's it. And all we have to do is then tell the template to look for a response or set the response to things one. So now we get to see that actually happen. And here it is. So you can see the HTML that we actually pulled back. There we go. Let's make this larger. So you can see our HTML that we pull back. And now we'll go to visualize. And as you saw before, here is the actual data that we scraped and put into a card like structure for each of those jobs. So instead of a cell, it's just a card. So here, as you know, we have that company name, the title, the location, the apply link that allows us to apply, and then the actual description. So in this case, you'll notice that the description is actually marked down with markdown syntax. And uh, in here, I don't have a markdown renderer. So it just comes back as, as plain text. And so that really uh, covers the the use case or the example here of my uh, web scraping with with Cheerio JS and Postman Visualizer to show it. So I want to give a, a quick shout out to two articles that really helped me do this. Uh, one being a medium article I found online, it's actually using remote okay as their example and Cheerio JS. So uh, I built on top of that by adding some other features in here and throwing it into postman. Additionally, uh, I did not create this postman template. Uh, it was from a open DB open DB brewery uh, postman template. Uh, or visualizer template on their website. And I want to thank Tristan for providing that. I really appreciate you showing sharing that with the community and allowed me to create this. Uh, lastly, I want to mention that with this, you can't actually do dynamic web scraping. And what I mean by that is, if you're going to a website where they use client side JavaScript, you won't be able to do that here because when you actually pull down that response text, it is non rendered uh, JavaScript. So you will pull back JavaScript in there, but you can't actually parse that. So there's a limitation in doing that with this. However, in order to get around that you would use something like nightmare.js, which is a headless web browser runner, so to speak, or use selenium as well, which can do the same thing. And it will pull down that completely rendered uh, HTML and JavaScript, and get you that the data that you're looking at, and then you could pull it down from there. However, Postman does not have support for both of those. So we cannot do it in here. But I would argue this is a great way to get started and to 
and to learn from it. So that about covers it. Uh, I thank you guys for following me in this journey. I really appreciate it. Uh, I hope you got a lot of value out of this uh, content in particular. So if you did get some value and you really like uh, web APIs, web security, uh, network security, and those things, uh, let alone other IT tools and technologies and development, go ahead and follow me. I'd really like it. If you didn't really like it, you know, there's always this button too, but that's up to you guys. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks again and take care.